We are currently in the wake of several scandals related to Google. The antitrust trial of 2023, the recent expose of how Google's algorithms favor big brands by crushing independent sites in the process, and the alarming revelations about the manipulation of search results to monopolize web traffic. These controversies raise questions about the search results' fairness, accuracy, transparency, and the ethical implications of big brand dominance in the digital landscape. Today, I want to show you how all these factors collide by examining Google's own use of search engine results page list-based features to further their monetary gains while going against all of their own content guidelines and advice. By the end, you will see how list-based SERP features directly copy programmatic SEO practices, which Google's own spokespeople have for a long time labeled as spam. These features not only fail on their promise to enhance the user experience, but also diminish the visibility of legitimate publishers with original ideas, worsening the search landscape in the process. I also want to say that I am extremely, extremely grateful to have this research published in search engine land this means the world to me and hopefully it also means that a wide variety of people are going to see this research. Definitely go check out their publication. The link will be uh, featured in the comment section below. Let's start by examining how the specific from sources across the web SERP feature came to dominate search results. Looking into Barry Schwartz's chronicles on Search Engine Roundtable, we can trace back the first few instances of Google experimenting with carousels in 2017, pulling information about top brands, and then later around 2020, introducing content summaries for list-based content with the list includes SERP feature. Around 2022, Google started introducing the SERP feature from sources across the web, which today appears to have replaced all previous list-based content summary SERP features for all of the search queries that used to show other search features. Google now uses the from sources across the web SERP feature for a variety of search queries, mainly with commercial intent, such as best or otherwise best date spots in a city, best small towns near a city, best software type, best software type for specific use case. It also surfaces this type of content for checklists, for instance, YouTube checklist or a type of software like SEO software analytics or ERP software. It surfaces this also for dates in a city or, or a location like date ideas for couples in Dallas or date ideas for couples in California, regardless whether you provide any nuance to the query, like for instance, date ideas for families or for friends, the SERP feature is not going to capture that nuance and make the results super different, so to speak. And finally, it also uses that for industry tools like SEO tools, SaaS tools, analytics tools, and also super big variety of other queries uh, that you will see if you start experimenting with this yourself. Let's talk a little bit about how the from sources across the web SERP feature relates to programmatic SEO. Typically, whenever people think about programmatic content, most often they think about content generated programmatically, like via ChatGPT or some sort of equivalent, or they would think about spam, like this content is always spam, because this is what Google spokespeople have referred to it as. But programmatic content is actually database driven content. That means that all of the information that you have on a given topic is organized in a database, which then populates dynamically a page template to create unique pages. The content aspect of programmatic SEO or otherwise populating the database can be generated programmatically, like you can use generative AI to get content, but that has not historically been the case. Typically, the content is pulled from an internal database of a big enterprise. Let's look at some databases of companies and see how they are used. The hotel list of booking.com, for example, is used to create content in formats like hotel type descriptor, like luxury or family hotels in location. Another example is the flights database of Expedia, which historically has been used to create content in formats like cheap flights to certain destination. 
Another example is the company database of a website like G2, which is used to create content in formats like best insert industry software. In order to populate the data in this SERP feature, Google is pulling data from the most prolific list-based content websites, which in many industries are also big enterprises, and it's combining it with its own data of entities and brands. This is described in some of their patent filings, specifically this pattern from 2021, which describes a content management system or storage system, otherwise known as a database, where eligible content items, including entities and brands, are combined with the top search results to create a combined search result item. This practice directly aligns with the description of programmatic SEO, or otherwise it is database-driven content, structured via a reusable template before being presented to the user. So let's explore the use of this snippet in detail. Let me show you how this practice leaves both users and publishers worse off and why Google is doing it nonetheless. Spoiler alert, as you've probably guessed, it's for money, of course. Now that we've covered the basics and how we got here, let's explore the age-old question. Does this actually improve search results and the user experience, or is it yet another tactic for, that Google uses for their gain? We are going to break down the SERP's accuracy of information, the authoritativeness of the sources that are used, and the overall quality in relation to the search intent of a user. In order to do this, let's go on a journey for a user that has typed in the query best SEO consultants. What we might expect from the user at this stage is that their search intent is probably to find SEO consultants, meaning people that are within the SEO field that are currently doing consulting for SEO services specifically. When we do this search, we are met with the from sources across the web SERP feature. We're going to explore the validity of the information in the SERP feature and its relation to the query. Let's look at the image on the screen. We can make the following observations. There are 24 slots for SEO consultants to be added in the SERP feature. Only 14 of those slots are filled by people. 10 of the entities mentioned are organizations or agencies. Seven of the 14th people mentioned in the SERP no longer have an SEO consulting practice, meaning they have either now moved to other companies, including being hired by Google, have founded their own companies or are no longer taking SEO clients as indicated on their website, meaning that they don't actually fit the description of SEO consultants at this present day because they don't have a consulting practice. Out of the 24 slots in the SERP feature, only seven are slots filled in with data that directly and accurately addresses the user query, meaning there are only seven out of 24 actual currently practicing SEO consultants featured in the SERP feature. Only two out of the 14 people mentioned in the SERP feature are women and only three are people of color. This is extremely alarming and concerning specifically for this query and many others like it because as someone operating in this industry, I can tell you that that is not an accurate representation of the percentage distribution of women or minorities in our field. I guess as women and minorities, we now have another hurdle to surpass in order to get to a leveled playing field, but let's continue. Let's take it a step further and answer the question, where is Google pulling this information from? It's Google authority. So they must be using some high quality sources and a good variety of them, right? Well, no. Upon inspecting the sources further, we can note several major flaws with the selection of sources that inform the SERP feature. Google chooses sources that clearly do not match the search intent. For instance, it pulls the data from lists that feature SEO experts, which is not the same as an SEO consultant as we have already established. 
Google sources information from non-authoritative, non-factual, affiliate and sponsored link sites or spammy websites. For context, out of the total of 80 links that are featured as part of the best SEO consultant search results or snippet, there are 30 from LinkedIn Pulse, which we all know is primarily AI generated content of a very low quality. Four are from Medium blo blogs. There are only 27 out of a total of 80 unique sources that informed this entire SERP feature, which takes the top position. I don't know about you, but I don't think this is good research to feature in the top position. Another thing is that Google does not feature any original research to create these panels. They don't feature any new or unseen information. They don't fact check the information that is featured and they don't use all of the web sources available to Google in order to create these summaries. So we're all wondering, what are Google's motivations for doing this then? Obviously, it's not for the user experience. I imagine what many of you are thinking, and so was I, especially when I was writing this last bit. Well, of course, they don't actually analyze all of the web sources to create these panels. Imagine the costs involved in actually delivering this kind of information at scale with precision. And yes, that's true. Not only will it be so costly and resource intensive for Google to do these panels correctly, but it will also involve not relying on links or click data, but actually understanding the content of web pages and the text in them, which Google has hinted at at their antitrust trial that they don't know how to do that well yet. But we have to understand why they are doing this in the first place. To do that, let's go back to the question of what kind of websites or brands typically invest in and benefit the most out of programmatic SEO or otherwise database driven content. First to mind are big enterprises with big databases, because that's what you need in order to run a programmatic SEO campaign. Think of companies like Expedia, TripAdvisor, Skyscanner, Booking.com in the travel niche, or Zapier and Canva in the SaaS niche, or even G2 and Clutch in reviews, and so on. And the interesting part here is within the antitrust trial, representatives from Expedia and Booking were testifying against Google, and they accused the organization of monopolizing search results by unfairly promoting their competitor microorganizations like Google Flight or Google Hotels and introducing changes to search results pages while sim simultaneously raising advertising prices to push the competition away from the, the, the top search results screen. Going back to the from sources across the web snippet, the only way to surpass this block of text is you guessed it, to pay for a sponsored placement, meaning list-based queries, especially the ones with commercial intent, are entirely a pay-to-play game now. You can pay a third party to feature you in spammy lists, or you can pay Google to appear before the SERP feature as a sponsored post. This is just another way for Google to directly target companies that would otherwise dominate the search results organically for this type of queries, making sure that either the companies pay them for visibility or they lose on user clicks to their website. And yet again, this is nothing new. Although now dated, a study on feature snippets from 2017 showed that snippets appear a little less than a third of the queries in the top position, but they do capture about 8.6% of clicks whenever they are in the first position. I would be very curious to see a study that is more present, especially considering how many new snippets have been introduced since 2017 and how prominent they have become in search. I imagine that the results would be much more gloomy for clicks and, and organic results as well. Just to summarize, Google is clearly doing this in order to raise their profitability, but is also clearly doing this with a blatant disregard for the user experience or the quality of information that it is surfacing within those panels. And next, I want to talk about how this practice not only hurts users and publishers, but also completely diminishes trust within the search and information landscape. 
there is a very big problem that this practice enforces. It demotes truly unique and original ideas. In many cases that I look through as part of my research, the user is worse off with the information that is listed in the SERP feature than they would be if they were to visit any of the top ranked websites. And let's imagine that you have or work for an independent website and your niche search results are dominated with these snippets. When you start creating your content in a listicle format, you will need to look at top ranked results and the search snippet data and to a degree, replicate the data in them as part of the list you create. But the key thing that any reputable consultant will say is to improve the list by adding new ideas, new concepts, original data, research, new perspectives, and so on. So you will include a bunch of original, highly relevant ideas to your lists, ideas that no other website has written about. Would they be featured in this snippet? No, not unless other sites start mentioning them too, at which point they will no longer be original and your small site is unlikely to be featured in this snippet anyway due to lack of perceived authoritativeness, otherwise probably links or whatever other metric Google uses to determine which websites it includes in this snippet. So in order for you to get a placement in this feature, Inherently, your list should mention things that other websites have already mentioned. And the presence of the SERP feature means that the user needs to click on your article specifically in order to see your original ideas. We have already seen that that doesn't always happen. So by default, the user sees only unoriginal ideas as part of the SERP's top result or the featured snippet. This creates a vicious loop of unoriginality, fueling the top results for queries, the results of which are highly important for users and publishers alike. In my opinion, this is the exact reason why many people turn to platforms like TikTok, YouTube, or forums like Quora or Reddit in order to get a more personal recommendation and original ideas for this type of queries. Now, I want to pause here and recap some of the main takeaways. And I will also share some of the final thoughts of why I care and also maybe why you should care too. Let's recap some of the main issues. Google's from sources across the web SERP feature is by definition programmatic SEO content, but it's not a format that uses any original content. The information in Google's databases that informs the snippet appears to not be fact-checked or frequently updated and often presents information from a limited amount of low quality sources that do not align with the user search intent. These snippets have come to dominate commercial investigation intent queries, often taking the first position when they appear in search results and can only be outranked by sponsored slots. In many ways, the entire process of how the snippet is built and how well it addresses the search intent is against Google's own content quality guidelines, yet the same guidelines are applied to demote independent publishers' content. Overall, this featured snippet leads to erasure of original ideas and in some cases even disadvantages entire minority groups, all done for the sake of a higher ad revenue on Google's end. Now, hopefully, within this next very short section, I will show you why I think we should all care about this. And I'll do this by dispelling some myths and misconceptions about why I have done this analysis and what I'm trying to show. I'm imagining that a lot of people reading this analysis are going to say one of the few things. First one, you're not a good SEO. If you were a good SEO, you wouldn't be worried about this and you would just find a way to be featured in the snippet one way or another. So unless we all decide to put our black hat and ditch any integrity of how we do our work, we are screwed. Many of the SEO consultants that I know and that I have worked with would not ever recommend shady practices, even though with the recent developments and news, it's becoming ever more visible that 
Google's algorithms don't actually function as well as we have been told. There is not a high degree of content understanding like we have been told. And the only way that we can get ahead is by buying links, mentions that typically wouldn't get you anywhere or are of low quality in terms of brand awareness and so on. That is not an industry where I would like to continue to operate if that is the road where we're headed. And I'm sure that a lot of SEO consultants with reputable personal brands are going to tell you the same thing. Google has a duty to shareholders to keep costs down and raise profitability. As a shareholder, I understand that. But I also think that they have a duty to the people that do billions of searches on its platform daily the users of Google search to surface accurate information informed by authoritative sources that are relevant to the user query and overall move the search quality and the results that are served to a better quality and improve their Google search product in the process. If they only change which pages they pull the information from, the problem with this snippet will be solved. This snippet fundamentally reduces the visibility of truly original ideas. Its structure and design fail to provide the much needed context on the included list items and the relevancy of these list items to the user's search. And as well as that, the selection process behind the list items and the sources added in the snippet is not at all explained or transparent, making it extremely manipulative overall as a practice. I am hoping that my analysis has helped to illuminate some of the issues we are facing, especially with the erasure of visibility of original ideas, especially when they're featured in list-based content and whenever they are in a niche where the search results are highly populated with this particular featured snippet. Hopefully, it has also showed you why commercial intent queries are now even more difficult to rank for organically. I'm hoping that all of this can change. But until then, I'm very much looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the analysis. So drop them in the comments below. Thank you very much for Search Engine Land. And also thank you to you if you have managed to watch the video until the end.